I have a bone to pick with Quentin Tarantino. This has been bothering me for years. A certain scene in the movie Pulp Fiction. Yes. The scene with Winston Wolf, who solves problems. Yes. He's come there to take care of this problem with the car and mm -hmm. the blood and everything, and he comes up with this elaborate plan. I've got a simpler plan. Call a tow truck. Oh. Get one of those things that covers up cars, <laughs> tow the car to wherever you need to dispose it. Oh. Easy I, peasy. You don't even have to get the body out of the back seat. You don't need to take spray bottles and, and clean the windshield. You have proven yourself to be Madison, Wisconsin's Winston Wolf. It's good coffee. I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to The Basement. It's still May, and that means we're still watching musicals. Today's movie needs no introduction. That is not a, a thing. Uh, that... Oh, I know. The movie's not in here. It's underneath your coffee cup. Oh. We're watching the apple. Oh, Matt! <laughs> the apple! <laughs> It's been sitting here ever since someone sent it to us. I've been planning this for months, the ultimate fake out. <laughs> Released in 1980, The Apple, also called Star Rock, was written and directed by Menachem Golan. It stars Catherine Mary Stewart and a bunch of other people who we've probably never heard of. Probably not. Principal photography took place in West Berlin. Some scenes in the film were shot in a factory that formerly served as a gas chamber during World War II. This is legitimately considered to be one of the worst movies ever made. There's some general consensus on this. When the film was booed at the Montreal International Film Festival, legend has it that Golan went back to his hotel room with the intention to commit suicide. Oh, think of that happened. His leap from the balcony was interrupted by his business partner, and he went on to live to the ripe old age of 85. What's this? What's this? Ah, neck apple. Yes. One of the big trends in musical making is to take a film that's not a musical and turn it into a stage musical. Little Shop of Horrors, The Lion King, The Producers, you name it. Your Gift is another one of those films. And it's a movie that contains a phrase that you're quite fond of. Oh, hold on. Here we go. Oh, Reefer Madness. Faster, faster. I have seen the stage musical of this. Oh, okay. Yes, which is uh, a delight. I'll watch this with my son, and I'll keep him off the pot. Stroll on down to the orchard that is the old leather couch, where we are going to pluck ourselves a hopefully delicious treat known as the apple. Come with me into the future, 1994. It's time for the World Vision Song Contest. The first number is by these shiny folks. Me! Me! Aggressive. They're signed with BIM. Boogaloo International Music. The biggest record label on the planet. There ain't no good. There ain't no bad. There ain't no good, I think is true. <laughs> Boy, listening to these two, I could be a singer. <laughs> B! I say B! I say B! Achoo! There ain't no pride! There ain't no shame! <laughs> two more true statements. There's only power! Bin is the power! Bin is the power. It's mm -hmm. the power of storage. Get a few bins. <laughs> Bim. In the control room, Mr. Shake is looking at the uh, heart rate. No song could beat this in the heart rate and the pulse rate. Mr. Boogalow watches over everything. I predict our Bim song is going to take this competition by storm. Our next number is a little folk duo. Alfie and Bibi. Bibi. That's what we call Cecil. That's one of his nicknames, Bibi. How dare this movie taint that. Love. Boring. They do an acoustic ballad. That guy looks like Christian Bale with extra bones in his face. <laughs> Which Bale would do for a show? <laughs> yeah. Gain weight, lose weight, put more bones in his body. <laughs> the crowd quickly becomes bored. But as they settle down and listen, they realize that they love it. What's the matter with you? I'm BB struck. No song could beat the BIM song, but here's a song beating the BIM song. Don't worry, boss. They'll never reach 150. 151. What? He sends his flunky, Mr. Shake, to uh, do a little bit of meddling. 
meddling accomplished. They get booed off the stage. BB out. There's a party at Mr. Boogaloo's place. To Bim. Alfie and BB show up. They're these rubes just in from Moose Jaw. Uh, Moose Jaw. And everybody's kind of snickering at him. This is my star, Dandy. And this is my beautiful Pandy. And they get separated. This is the roof garden. Oh, it's, it's so roofy. Speaking of which, this champagne <laughs> is making me dizzy. Here, try one of these. What are they? Just little pills. They won't harm you. Just some pills. You're really from the sticks, aren't you? The jaw of the moose. And they start kissing. And everybody sees it. Dandy sings a little song to her. You made for me. And I am your king. <laughs> king? King. And she buys it. How do you do this to me? It's the pill. You took the pill. I'm under your spell. For no reason at all. <laughs> They're going to get signed by Mr. Boogaloo. Boogalow. They can't even spell Boogaloo right. Mr. Boogaloo is busy. Perhaps you can see Mr. Watusi or Mr. Hully Gully. They're in the waiting room where this is happening. It's like Fossy hands if you're having a seizure. <laughs> like a puppet on the string. He's singing. <laughs> Sitting on a bullet. <laughs> we fight for the spotlight. We this guy's not so bad. He's just a go-getter. He's dressed for success. They finally see Mr. Boogaloo, and he's already got contracts ready to sign. Mr. Boogaloo, do you mind if we read them first? Keep in mind that you have an appointment with Ingrid Stockinger at 5 o'clock. Stockinger? I barely know her. Less than 20 minutes. Yes. He's not evil. He's just efficient. He, he puts all their appointments close together. Where do I have to sign? Uh, right here. I'm hopelessly gullible, as has been previously proven. What could possibly go wrong by signing a contract without reading it? Crackly jackly, things get nuts. He's registering surprise on his face. That's something that actors do. It was an earthquake. Earthquake. Classic Moose Jaw accent. Come on, just sign it. What's it all about, Alfie? Sign the contract. He has a vision. It's getting dark. Alfie's got the shining. Now they're in hell. Mr. Boogalow and all of his buddies are all devils. The apple. The apple is here. Take a bite of the apple. Let this song convince you. Let me be your guide through the apple paradise. It's a natural, natural, natural desire. Meet an actual, actual, actual vampire. <laughs> you'll be hypnotized and you'll be demonized, but you'll be paralyzed, so you'll be victimized. So you're arguing I should be paralyzed so I can be victimized? All right. You know, these guys like to have fun, and I really appreciate that. Oh, uh, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. A lie, a fie. Alfie, okay. As Alfie comes out of his reverie, he says, No, I'm not signing this contract. BB is in the clutches of Mr. Boogaloo. Boogaloo immediately starts grooming BB for stardom, and he sings a little song. It's you who spins the wheel. When you know how to be a master. When you know how to be a master. Put the lime in the coconut and drink it all up. Lime when you know how to be a master. Mr. Boogaloo arranges everything for me. She deserves everything she gets. She's an idiot. Now that we've completely changed your look and your style, you're going to the West Coast and you're going to sing from coast to coast. Yeah. It's like Fossy hands after smoking a lot of crack. She sings a song about the thing America loves. Speed. Yeah, man, speed. There's just one thing we're all dying for. Speed! It's 1994, and I do believe that the movie Speed came out this year. Oh. Speed! Popping power by the hour. Crank! She's got the need. The need for going very fast. We meet this woman. She's a landlady, and she's a hoot. How can a man sleep so long? Take some speed, you'll wake up! 
I've just written a new song. Yeah, I heard it. You kept me awake all night with that racket. One of his songs kept someone awake? I don't believe that for a second. It's going to be great. As great as this, double honk. His new song is a little ditty called... Where has love gone? Bim, 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 bim. It makes every song go better. <laughs> bim, bim, bim. Where has love gone? Uh, she signed on with the BIM Corporation and Mr. Boogalow. <laughs> Thank you very much. Could you put more BIM in it? <laughs> it's four o'clock. You know what that means. BIM hour. Everyone, we're going to party it down. Doesn't matter what you got going on. It's BIM hour. Hey, hey, hey. We have to do this for a solid hour. What? Margaret Atwood showed up under his eye. Hey, hey, hey. It's way. I feel like getting into this too. Matt, do it right. Mm -mm. <laughs> Bim's not evil. They're encouraging physical fitness and yeah. exercise. They're not saying her name, they're grading her performance. It was a solid B. And Alfie sees her and he tries to talk to her, but he ends up getting beat up by her goons. boo a boo a boo Is he a vampire? <laughs> An actual, actual, actual vampire? <laughs> Alone in her penthouse, BB isn't really happy. And she sings that. Right. <laughs> should I go on living? No. Or should I end it all? Yes. When Golem was about to throw himself off of the balcony, he was thinking that line. <laughs> he was singing this actual song. Cry for me. <laughs> when will this song be over? <laughs> Cry for me, Matt. Cry. Hearing the song from very far away, Argentina responds appropriately. I thought you were dead. You want some of this, huh? I know you like this. You so much sugar. You're making me plots. You love her, go find her. Tropical rhythms. So he goes back to the penthouse where Mr. Bigelew lives. Pandy, where is she? She's with that dandy. Dandy. Pandy says she'll help. And I'm going to sing this song, which is known in the biz as a single entendre. Now I'm coming, coming for you. Come to me, oh, come to me. Go through with this, Alfie. It took her a very long time to figure out that belt. He escapes her legs clutches. Uh, baby. Oh, where's Baby? My pants are all sticky. Gotta find Baby. Who are you? Baby. No, my Baby. Who are you? Alfie is woken by a bum on a park bench. What's going on? Baby. Shush, 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 shush. Me and my hobbit friends are just going <laughs> off to get rid of a ring. Come. Come. Come for me. <laughs> I was singing that song while you were asleep and writhing on top of you. Who takes him to this group of people. Once upon a time, they were known as hippies. We're just out here living lives of peace. There is a cave under the bridge. You can find us there. Every once in a while, the Morlocks harvest a few of us for food. But other than that, it's a cool cave. Did you have fun last night? Eh. You dreamt that Alfie was here, didn't you? Yes. How did you know? There's no reason why I would know that. Go about your business today, Biebs. <laughs> Biebs. She is the female Justin Bieber of 1994, and her fans are known as Bibi Liebers. <laughs> Alfie loves you, Bibi. Was so in love with you that he couldn't take my sex. And Pandy sings. Oh, I'm full of feeling again. Because of Alfie's magical dick. Yeah. Over here. That guy's gonna sell her some quality oxy. <laughs> Are you looking for someone? Yes. Is he a Balrog? Cause I know him. She sees all those people. She says, how can they live in a cave? Like the Stone Age. The Rolling Stone Age, man. I was at Altamont. I know. Pretty heavy night. Light my way, child of love. This guy gets a song? Child of love. Is 
the power of love going to defeat Bim Boogalow. <laughs> Speaking of which, he's got to show up again really soon because I'm not ending this movie unless I see Boogalow. Boogalow has to fight Gandalf. Time passes. Enough time for Alfie to grow a beard and for Bibi to grow a baby. Oh no! We're being hassled by the pigs! <laughs> Heavy! We're looking for you, BB! They're all yours, Mr. Boogaloo. Back to the other pronunciation. She owes him ten million dollars. Ten million dollars. Ten million dollars. Ten million dollars. Because you signed a contract. Don't worry. Mr. Tops. Mr. Tops will soon be here. Who's Mr. Tops? He's that guy! He drives a fancy car through the sky. All right, I'm going to say it. This movie has gotten ridiculous. <laughs> they call me Mr. Tops. Is he God? Maybe. Everyone, come with me. And they all start marching up into the sky. <laughs> this movie has really managed to surprise me. This ending is genuinely stupid. <laughs> you can't start a world without me. Well, maybe this time I will. And this time there'll be peace and dandiness, but without dandy. They do take pandy, though. Bye, Mr. Tops. Bye, Apple. We've gotten to the core of the apple. That's right, seeds and all. I had a heck of a time watching it. It was a lot of fun. You know, there are bad movies that are, like, just not fun to watch. I don't no. think Mano's Hands of Fate is that fun to watch without having the assistance of Mystery Science Theater. Yeah, yeah. While this was a delight of badness, the musical numbers were so close to being well-conceived. It really does seem as if a lot of the dance numbers are filmed early on in the rehearsal process of the dance. Once we actually have the dance down, it's gonna be a pretty decent dance. I'm just making certain that I know where the arms go right now. Most of the choreography seems to just be the pointing of limbs. Very fist-centric choreography going on here. The songs themselves are just so lame. There's a hundred things wrong with this movie, yes. and I think the main problem is BB and Alfie. With a story like this, they have to anchor it in every way. Mm -hmm. Their relationship, their acting abilities, the audience caring about them. All three of those things are non-existent. These two people are supposed to be the foundation of the movie, and they're just lighter than air. It doesn't help that we meet them just doing their first song, and then immediately she signs a contract. Yeah. Possibly if we had just a little bit more other than the fact that they're from Moose Jaw. They're the main characters of the movie, and we know almost nothing about them. The other problem with this, the reason that all those Montreal people booed it all those years ago, is, of course, expectation. We didn't have that problem. We yeah. knew this was going to be a terrible movie, and so you can kind of see that there's some fun to be had. Yeah, you go to a film festival, you think that the movies would have been vetted enough. I think we should talk about Mr. Tops. We're all familiar with the term deus ex machina here, right? God mm. from the machine. He literally shows up in a machine, and he's literally God. <laughs> if they would have had some sort of foreshadowing that this might happen, maybe if that hippie was there earlier. And that this is the type of world where things like this happen. You can't just have cars coming down from the sky this late in the movie when no. you haven't established cars coming from the sky. And they could have established it because the devil was clearly in this movie. How did you like Vladek Schleyball <laughs> as Mr. Borgalore? He seemed to be enjoying himself and he seemed to have the ability to sell that character to the extent that he needed to. In the end of the movie, God literally abandons the earth. See you around, guys. I'm taking this small group of people. Everyone else stay under the oppressive dictatorship of Satan. Earlier they said that there were billions of Americans. Yes. And he takes about 40 of them mm -hmm. off to his new planet. The landlady's left behind. Oh, yeah. yeah. There should have been a little scene where she comes to the park and is like, wait for me. It's funny that the devil in this movie is called Boogaloo, considering that Canon Films' greatest gift to the world was that they gave us the term electric boogaloo. Well, that's a character in Break-In and Break-In 2. Boogaloo shrimp. I do have to say that one of my least favorite joke cliches is blank to electric boogaloo. Like, oh yeah. yeah. So stop doing that people. They won't. When you say publicly that something annoys you and that you wish people would stop doing it, they will constantly do it because fundamentally people want you to suffer for their amusement. 1994, the future. It's not what 1994 looked like for me. In the future, they'll all drive station wagons with weird configurations of lights. 
1994, musically, was the height of the grunge era, so it was the exact opposite of the Apple. If there's one thing that the movie did right, was filming in West Berlin. If you want to make something look like the not-too-distant future, West Berlin is your man. Every single location in this movie looked like a little version of hell. The Russians could invade any time. Let's not make anything pretty. Whoever made this, well, we know who made it. It's Golem. He obviously did like his Fellini. I think that's what he was going for. You line this up against Satyricon, and you see one thing working, one thing not. The apple. We've consumed it. Matt, no! And now it's time for Phoenix. Seen it. Our theme for Scenics, Musicals, Part 2. Joseph Frazier says, An older movie that I didn't love but enjoyed all the same was The Sound of Music. Seen it. So long, farewell, of Rita Zane, seen it. I saw this in college with a group of girls. Yeah. And I remember just being very bored by it. I saw it every single year when it played on TV. It played in our house. Did you like it? Yeah. I think it was the biggest box office musical of all time. So, yeah, I was just swept away with it. Is the Nazi threat too heavy-handed in the movie, or do you think it strikes a balance? It's right where it should be. Okay. We know what's going on. Uh, when I was a kid, I'm like, oh, what's all this about? You know, this is intriguing. But I imagine coming into it later, I probably would be very, very bored by it, mm. catching it in my 20s or whatever. Jennifer Madrin, The Music Man. Seen it. Or should I say, Shapoopy. That's what it's from. Shapoopy, 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 The Girl It's Hard to Get. Not seen it. You've seen every musical ever made, and you have not seen The Music Man. I had a crush on a woman in college that I called Marion the Lady Librarian, but I've never seen it. I saw it recently. I wondered if it was one of those musicals that has just sort of passed its ability for people to be interested in. Yeah, it's like, all is it too quaint? Corny Americana. Yeah. People singing about pool tables. I found that to be the case. I, I wasn't really compelled by it. The first couple of musical numbers they do, they mm -hmm. do it in this weird style where they're not really singing, they're just kind of doing this, and we're going to go on the train, and we're going to the town, and we're going to get off, and they're singing like this. It's like rapping Rap with music. no rhyming or flow. Yeah. Well, Music Man stars Robert Preston, so does this one. Victoria Casanova says, I saw Victor Victoria for the first time last year. I find it sinful that it took this long to finally see it. Especially as the title includes my own friggin' name in it! I may not sleep with you for a meatball, but I've seen it. The movie could have been made today as far as its attitudes about gender politics and gender identity goes. And it works so well. They make it seem so natural how it's discussed in the movie. While today it would all be, well, what a man is and what a woman is isn't always the same thing and we're teaching you a lesson. While that was just like, it's just who we are, man. But I would have to say that the musical aspects of the movies I found kind of dull. Bats dumb. You two should watch The Umbrellas of Cherbourg. It's a musical where the characters sing every word and it's heartbreaking. Seen it. Seen it. I saw it like two nights ago. Heartbreaking? I don't want to give away the ending, but I didn't find it particularly heartbreaking. You say that, but the next time you hear that song, the main motif that goes through the movie, and you'll be like, oh, why am I sad right now? I don't know why. Or at least that's how it is with me. Whenever like that song pops up at the Oscars, I'm like, ah. You know what I would have done if I was directing that movie? Last scene, no singing. Oh, yeah. Years yeah. have passed, the music is out of their life. We're just talking here. What I loved about this movie was the wallpaper. <laughs> Every room had the most beautiful wallpaper you've ever seen. The wallpaper in her room, I could stare at it for hours. I love wallpaper. I know it's a pain in the ass. Bring back wallpaper. So we should take a trip to Cherbourg. <laughs> Just to look in people's apartments, just look at the walls. <laughs> you don't have to sign a contract of any sort to get to our website. Welcome to TheBasementShow.com. All of our episodes are there, all eight years of them, and there are PayPal donation buttons. You can click on those to help support this show if you so desire. Has anyone done this? You know they have. It'd be weird if you brought it up and there wasn't any. Thomas, who says, Can you please give a birthday shout out to my best friend, John, who turns 25 on the 26th? Without him, I would not have seen this awesome channel. Hey! Happy birthday, John! To find out who the rest of our donors are and to see the contents of our mail crate, you can watch Unboxing, which comes out this coming Friday. We'll see you there. And now, take a look at this. You made for me. Craig, you're, you're kind of were made for me. Really? Yeah. Is it the pills talking? Or is it actually you? <laughs>
Matt and I take lots of pills. Just random ones we find. <laughs>